Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to you from myself, Stefan Jans for Innsbruck and the Space Base team. I've spent the better part of my career working uh, working with complex data related problems, and we'll be speaking to you about data in the payroll world this morning. Payroll is one of those functions in an organization where immense amount of data is generated on a continuous basis, but I, but I believe this cornucopia of potential knowledge and insight is really is rarely used to its full potential. First, let's talk about payroll as a business function. Payroll is often a function re that reports into finance. I mean, this makes sense. We are dealing with a with financial information. We need to make payments and adhere to very strict timelines and legislative requirements. This is a job for the bean counters and tax gurus, right? Well. Also come across a number of companies where payroll actually reports into HR. This also makes sense to an extent, as we are dealing with our employees and their livelihoods. We are dealing with intensely personal information, salaries, bank details, ID numbers, tax numbers, dependents, demographics, and so forth, and so forth. What I almost never come across is a financial department and an HR department agreeing on a headcount number or agreeing on a training cost amount not to mention the monthly salary bill according to HR versus the salary bill according to finance. They almost never reconcile and there's always some kind of investigation going on to get to the root of the differences. Secondly, there's an urgency to payroll that very few other business functions ever experience. This is about, think about this for a second. If an HR system is down for a couple of days, there will be some noise in the business. Some people will be unhappy, but business will go on as usual once the systems are back up and running. If a finance system is down for a couple of days, there will be much more noise. Sure, more people be, will be in trouble and some relationships with, with suppliers will need to be managed. But business will, will go on once back up and running as well. But in both cases, there will be a small subset of the workforce affected. Some comments will be made and it will come up every now and again in a meeting and might even be chuckled at at some point in the future. But if payroll is down and we miss the salary payment deadline, there will be absolute chaos. Heads will roll and entire workforce will be disgruntled and alienated. Rumors will start spreading and you could soon have a mutiny on your hands, not to mention months and months worth of damage to report, repair, if at all possible. Believe me, Monarchies have been overturned, lost and burned to the ground over less. Do not underestimate the impact something like this could have. I think what is important to take from this is that payroll exists with one leg in HR and one leg in finance, regardless of the official reporting lines. Both HR and finance feed data into payroll and derive insight from it. The questions that are asked from the data on the different business levels are of course vastly different. As a payroll function, we need to understand and cater for both. Because the insight we can derive from payroll data affects both finance and HR, payroll plays a pivotal role in both departments. The data they need come from the same system and often the same data set. We need to be aware and understand what kind of insight both finance and HR needs and what, mean, and what that means in the different levels of the organization. Let's look at what I mean when talking about the different levels in the organization. Having had a financial background, I always feel the need to draw a T account when explaining something, but I think it makes sense in this context. From a financial perspective, on a strategic level, this is where the big guns sit, making all the tough decisions and, make, and making the big bucks. The data-driven decisions they face are, Capital budgeting, which is basically a process an organization undertakes to evaluate potential major projects or investments using historic data. ROI, or return on investment. The weighted average cost of capital, which is basically the after tax rate that an organization expects to pay to finance its assets using historic data. Free cash flow which in turn affects the internal rates of return, 
and ultimately the share price of an organization. Of course, all of this is calculated and visualized with the aid of advanced analytics and complex equations using data that is provided from the financial payroll systems. Data feeds into, your, into the above section produced by the data that is that, that feeds into the above section is produced by the operational level. This is where processes are followed to perform transactions, which in turn produces the raw data that is then collated and aggregated to provide input into the strategic level. On the operational level, you can see transactions follow a life cycle. They may enter the data, the data ecosystem in different ways and undergo various transformations before they all eventually end up in the balance sheet. Believe me, let me explain. An organization might get an order to fulfill X number of products at a given point in time in the future. They commit to purchase raw materials, which then becomes a procurement process, after which they then capture the amounts owed to suppliers in accounts payable. These materials follow a transformation of their own, becoming work in progress, and eventually stock. When we fulfill the order, we capture and invoice what is an accounts receivable transaction. All this translates into profit and loss, which eventually feeds into the balance sheet. All these transactions could be captured in one big ERP system, or there could be an entire technical landscape of business systems that perform and record these transactions that produces the data that we need. However, these different financial transactions happening in different models seem to seamlessly flow through this life cycle to end up in the balance sheet. For these two transactions to properly to be properly accounted for, there is a core level that, that dictates how transactions are captured and how they interact with one another. On this level, certain principles and standards govern how this is done. The generally accepted accounting principles which are universally applied in different industries, as well as the finan international for financial reporting standards, which are both driven by an equation that was invented by an Italian mathematician called Luca Pacchioli in the early 1500s. E equals A plus L, or equity equals assets plus liabilities. This accounting equation formula gave rise to the double entry system, debits and credits which is why a balance sheet balances, which is why financial transactions speak the same language and can be aggregated and collated into financial reports, which is why a payroll deal extra extract needs to balance before it can be imported into a financial system. It is the reason functions, it is the reason different functions in, in finance can integrate into one another and what eventually enables top management to make key data-driven decisions they need to make. So now, on the HR side, things don't look that different from finance. There's also a strategic level where the big guns sit, making all the tough decisions and making the big bucks. The data-driven decisions they face concerns the following. Strategic reward and recognition. Are we paying and recognizing our employees justly and fairly across the group? Skills. Do we have the right skills to be competitive in the market? Are we growing the skills and abilities that the workforce of tomorrow needs to be successful? Succession planning. Are we identifying and cultivating the leaders of tomorrow? All of which feeds into strate strategic workforce planning. And once again, this is visualized and highlighted by advanced analytics using the data that is provided from our HR and payroll systems. On an operational level, things, things still look very similar. Employees enter the workforce and follow a similar life cycle, prior to retire if you like, where processes are followed to perform transactions, which produces the data and is collated and aggregated to provide input into the strategic level. Employees enter the workforce via talent acquisition process, which kicks off an onboarding process Performance management, performance management 
might reveal some gaps where employees need to work on. They are, they are assessed and then goes through a learning and development process, which is followed by a reward and recognition process. And this continues until the employee is eventually off-boarded. The big difference comes in here. Very often, these transactions, these different processes are performed in a siloed fashion, often not all on, the, on an integrated HR system, and the true value of data that could be shared between the different functions are lost due to a lack of consistency in the overall data-driven design or the lack thereof. This is because there is no universally accepted architecture or 600-year-old equation that governs how these functions integrate and interact with one another. There is no generally accepted HR principles or international HR reporting standards. There is no HR equation. There isn't an HR general ledger. Some custom data-driven designs are sometimes implemented by management consultants, consultants for organizations, if it can afford the bill and is big enough to pursue such endeavors. This is where I believe payroll comes in especially an ultra-modern payroll system like Payspace. Because we are, because we operate in both worlds, we can adhere to the structure and principles that finance operates in. While we can provide some structure to HR, where there is none, or adopt the custom architecture that might be in place already. For me, the question is less about data in the payroll world, because we already know what this, the, no, this is a fundam this is fundamental, but more what role payroll can play in the data world. At Payspace, the best payroll company in the world, these are the questions keeping up as, us up at night, so you don't have to. Thank you.